So it was a really great session with many, many important points. I won't be able to cover all of them here because it was a complex discussion. We started off talking about the problem. So the hypothesis is, or the problem is that although we've had an abundance of nutrients in myeloma, clearly we're not getting access to all of them. And even when we do get access, we're not getting access in the right sequence. And I guess our hypothesis was that if we could get better access and we could sequence treatments better, then outcomes for patients would improve. But that's easier said than done because we don't all get the same access. So rather than talking about what does the optimum myeloma pathway look like, which should be aspirational, we need to think about what's possible in different countries based on their access and make sure that pathway is optimized. So it's optimal pathways. So we got into the discussion around what are the causes? So why is this happening? And that's very, very complex because there's lots of different stakeholders in the system with different roles and different incentives and different rewards. So that's how people act. So industry do certain things in a certain way. They work within the rules they're being given and they're driven by answering regulatory questions in their studies. The evidence from these studies then comes to European HDA bodies and pairs and they look at it and they say, we don't understand this. It doesn't reflect current clinical practice in Slovenia or Slovakia or wherever it might be. We're not quite sure and it's expensive. So we're going to say no, or we're going to give a restricted approval. So even in a restricted approval sense, you get access, but keep in mind, myeloma is a very evolutionary disease. It's really smart. It isn't sitting there expecting not knowing what's coming next. It's evolving, developing, it's becoming resistant. And we need to match that with really dynamic and agile combinations of treatments in the right sequence to overcome the myeloma's ability to evolve and become resistant. We don't do that. We, we look in the, in the bag of treatments and we're only allowed to use a monotherapy in the Czech Republic. And the myeloma cell is like, this is great. I'm going to survive because I'm evolving and if they're only going to hit me with one drug, I will escape its impact. So as a consequence, we're not getting the maximum outcomes from the treatments that are available. So what we got into is, well, how do we solve this problem? It's super, super complex. And I guess where we landed was that it would be difficult to solve all the problems. So let's agree on the problems we think we can solve is point one. Point two is every stakeholder needs to be involved in the design of the solution. We can't do it in isolation. So we need to bring in regulators, pairs, HD bodies, pharma, patients and clinicians to sit around the table and say, look, there is no quick fix. We can't fix everything. But one of the things we can fix is even marginal gains and improving pathways within European countries will be transformational to patients. So the task that MPE has now is how do we take this forward in a very focused, realistic, and collaborative way so we can start to make just marginal improvements in terms of access and sequencing of drugs?